Hi guys, Tom here. I'm here to show you how to get the most out of your hapo giri or eight directional cutting practice. So hapo giri, what is it? Hapo giri simply means eight directional cutting. It has a lot deeper meaning too as well, but at, for beginners, we just tell them it's cutting in eight different directions to warm things up, to get your body going as a great warm up. Now, some other martial arts like Aikido, they also perform Hapo Giri, and some of those schools do it as a kata actually, where they have prearranged movements within that octagon. Um, in our school, we don't really do a prearranged kata, more or less, but we do use Hapo Giri to improve a lot of our swordsmanship. And I'm gonna show you right now how to get the most out of hapo giri rather than just haphazardly just swinging a sword around and, and, and getting warmed up, which is the first step. So what I like to do is I like to tell folks we start from the head and work our way down to the feet when practicing hapo giri. And incidentally, all you need for hapo giri is a wooden boken. And I've had folks tell me, well, I don't have the high ceilings in my house. It's January. It's freezing outside. How can I practice hapo giri? Well, very simple. Get yourself a smaller sword, a smaller weapon. Get yourself one of these. If you don't have a, um, a small wooden sword, like a wakazashi or a kodashi, um, get yourself a stick, a small stick, and just, and just use that. And if you don't even have a stick, any good Aikido practitioner can tell you, you can practice hapo giri just like this. Here's your sword right here. Your hands are in the position of holding a sword, and we can still practice these movements and still get a lot out of it, which you'll see in a second. So starting from the head, the reason we do, the reason we come to the dojo, what's the first reason that most of us come to the dojo? To clear our heads, to get rid of the day's stressors, and to have a good training session because it benefits our mental health. That's why we do lots of the stuff that we do. Martial arts, going to the gym, playing a musical instrument, um, just going for a run, playing tennis, whatever it is you like to do, the first reason is just to clear my head. Get rid of today's awful day at work. So that's what we start with Hapo Giri. We start at the top with our head. So we, we figure out where our eight angles are in front of us. And if you have a, a nice floor like in this dojo, we have lines in the floor here. You can use that as a reference. And the lines are literally straight in front of you, right behind you, to your left, to your right, and then little 45 degrees in between those first four, just like an octagon. Okay, those are the directions that you would cut in. So to clear your head at the beginning, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be exact. You can just kind of just relax, nice flowing movements. Try and hit all the angles best you can and just get rid of what happened today. Had a bad day at work. I forgot to feed the dog this morning. Forgot to take out the trash. My partner's mad at me at home. Whatever it is, we're trying to get rid of that right now for you. So once you've done that for a minute or two, then we concentrate on the shoulders and the arms. We want to warm up our, our upper limbs, which hold the weapon. So we go nice and slow, big stretches. I can feel a lot of tension back here already. And I'm doing this nice and slow and easy, maybe with one hand to just kind of relax and stretch out my chest, my arms. Now I'm starting to feel my hamstrings getting a little stretched now, but I'm really concentrating on the arms and the shoulders. And just work on that. We do that for a few minutes. And then we go down to the chest. And then we go down to the abdomen with the breathing. Most of the day, we fill our lungs up way up high when we breathe, especially when we're stressed. We do these short, rapid breaths because we're really stressed and upset. And what happens is it's kind of like inflating a balloon during the course of the day. And that builds up tension and stress in your neck and your upper back. When you breathe, try breathing like this. Take a deep breath, but fill your abdomen. Fill it right up physically, and then let it go. Practice that for a few times until you get used to doing it, and then do it while you're doing a hapo giri. So breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. You're going to find that now you're slowing down, and you're much more relaxed. And when you're relaxed, when you have no stress, you're going to learn more when you're in class, which is coming up after Hapo Giri. And you're going to feel better about yourself, and you're going to enjoy your session a lot more. 
Now we've gone from the head to the shoulders, to the chest, to the stomach. Now we concentrate on the hips. This is where we get a little more technical. Now I actually picture exactly where I think I want these lines in my hapogiri. And then when I do my cuts, I try and line up my hips to that angle. Now some schools want the hips square. Our particular school wants a little bit more of an angle, 45 degree angle, a little bit. It doesn't matter, it's whatever you're taught. That's what you do with your hips, as you look for those angles, and you line right up. Now we're getting more technical. Now we're practicing sword, but I'm also trying to do that same type of breathing at the same time. All right. Now we've gone from the head, we've gone to the shoulders, we've gone to the chest, the abdomen, the hips, now we go to the knees. Now this is the most important thing to think about from a safety perspective, especially if you're using a metal sword and especially if you're using a metal sword with a cutting edge on it, Shinken. We, I like to start practicing my angle cuts when I get down to the knee component of this exercise, the Kesa cuts, or Kesa Giri cuts, these angles. Now, different schools will teach you how much of an angle to create. Some do 45, some do 30, some do even less. Doesn't matter. Whatever sword is cutting, you cut away from that leg, whatever angle you're doing. So if you're starting up high, and I'm, I'm really exaggerating this right now, that foot goes out, so you cut away from it. I'm going to say that again. When the beginning of the angle cut is up high like this, that's the foot that's out front, so you're cutting away. If you cut the opposite direction, and if you cut too low like you're not supposed to do, you could cut your kneecap, your patella. And not only that, the medial part of your leg is very vulnerable, the middle. So you want to protect that by just having it not be there. Okay? Now whether or not your teacher tells you to stop your sword here, or they want you a little bit lower, you're still going to be safe because the correct leg is in the front. Okay? We've done the head. Shoulders, chest, abdomen, hips, knees. Now we concentrate on the feet or tai sabaki, which is probably one of the most important components of your exercise because every martial arts technique that we do starts from the ground, starts from Mother Earth. And if the very first thing that Mother Earth touches is your feet is disconnected, well, then the rest of this isn't going to make any difference at all in your practice. So it's important to have your feet in the correct position. And that's why I concentrate on the feet a lot. And a lot of my students comment on that. So essentially, you're always talking about the feet. It's important with any martial art technique. Okay? So how do we work on feet or tai sabaki movement when we're doing hapogiri? Well, a lot of times, regardless of the martial art you're doing, if you're practicing kata or if you're just, even if you're just boxing um, or doing any type of, of art that doesn't require kata but requires any kind of movement, feet are important. If I'm in this position and if I want to go over here for my next cut, well, that's 180 degrees. That's a long trip I have to take. Sometimes folks, and I'm going to show you my feet for this one, sometimes folks kind of leave this foot behind and let it catch up as I'm already cutting. Well, that's not good at all. You want to have good foot position on the ground before you begin your cut. So what you can do is turn this foot, front foot here in first to prepare for this position. How much do I turn it? Well, it depends on how far I have to move. If I'm going 180 degrees, and you notice I'm taking my sword with me, that's how far I turn it. I turn it, I think about, and you can come to this position and, and kind of look at it. Okay, right here. So that's where I have to go. My foot has to take that shape to go here. Okay? Also, if I'm doing some smaller angle movements, I don't have to move the foot as much just a little bit. But what's important is you're moving the front foot to prepare yourself for the next cut. Now you're going to find that your sword cutting technique is going to go a little bit off because you're concentrating on the feet. That's fine because that's a part of this hapogiri that you're concentrating on now is your feet. And sooner or later you're going to put it all together and that's what's important. Now there are some other advanced concepts where you move the other foot but for now, for beginners, what I want you guys to do is just move that front foot considering where my next movement is. Now, this may change how you've been doing hapagiri in the past, but this is just my advice to you to work on these foot movements. And, and other directions and the other foot, you're going to start to figure it out on your own, and you're going to enjoy hapagiri a lot more. 
Now we've gone from the head to the feet. Now we're going to go from the feet back up to the head. And the reason for that is, as you go back up the, the body parts here and concentrate on, on the little lessons I just gave you, I made you think about a lot of stuff, you're going to want to clear your head at the very end as well. Hope this drill helped you guys. Thank you so much for your support. It's really appreciated. And I hope you guys are having a great summer, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.